Hi, Larry Lane here with Live in the Container. A lot of people are writing in their comments at the end of all these videos, and I really appreciate that. One of the topics that's discussed is about spray on insulation. And is it safe? They're asking, is the spray on insulation safe to use in a house? And my answer is, no, it's not safe. But, and it's the rest of that sentence we're going to talk about in this video. Yeah, spray on insulation can be very dangerous. It's made with a lot of chemicals. Some of them are toxic. Some of them are flammable. And also they're, they're mixed together in certain ways. And that's a variable also depending on the manufacturer and the person that's applying it onto your, your building. So there's a lot of variables to be looked at. In fact, there's warnings on the boxes that you might buy spray on insulation at Home Depot, for example. It's pretty expensive. Uh, I'll go over the, the costs later, but I want to talk about the warnings, the cautions, some things that the code talks about, and also the benefits of using spray on insulation and the cost comparison of doing it yourself or hiring someone else. So starting with the warning, when you buy the spray on insulation in a kit, hopefully you never will. Hopefully you won't do it yourself. Hopefully you will hire someone else, but we'll go into that in a little bit. I went to Home Depot and I looked at the box that they have that they sell for uh, do it yourself homeowners. And in there, they've got all kinds of warnings and those warnings, you know, they talk about all of these kind of things. It just goes on and on and on about how flammable it is. Don't breathe it and uh, what to do on first aid. If you do get in contact with it, make sure you're protecting your eyes and your breathing and your clothes. You're fully covered with clothes on and on and on. But the main thing is when you're working with a uh, spray on insulation, make sure you're using closed cell insulation and not the open cell for various reasons. One is, is it's a lot more efficient in your R value. You're going to get a lot more R value with a closed cell than you are with an open cell. <clears throat> Another reason is because you, the closed cell acts more also as a moisture vapor barrier. And that's awesome when you're actually putting it onto the inside face of the building because you don't want little air pockets like an open cell would have that could hold and trap moisture in there and causing mold in the future and all kinds of nasty stuff. But if you have the closed cell and put it directly onto the surface of the shipping container, it doubles as an air barrier and an insulation barrier and as a vapor barrier. So it's an awesome product in that regard. Now, is it really safe? Yes, it is safe if it is applied properly, if it is mixed properly, and if um, it, the space that is occupied where the spray is applied upon, you don't want to occupy that place for whatever the manufacturer will recommend. I've read anywhere between eight hours to 24 hours to 72 hours. When I use spray on insulation, it's usually done um, on the weekends, actually, when there isn't anyone in the building. I used it on a, uh, on a health clinic health clinic, by the way. So there you go. You know, is it safe product? It's very safe for the health clinic to use as well. And what makes it safe is, is that it is, uh, it's given time to harden. <clears throat> and when it hardens, when it starts setting and get harder, it takes uh, maybe a few minutes for the outside edge to hard and not get tacky, but it continues to set and get harder further and further inside. So if you are if you have a thin coat that is applied, it's going to set faster than if it's a thicker coat. Also the time of its being uh, curing 
uh, we'll call it curing time when it gets set and harder. Um, sometimes that will be affected by the manufacturer about how the uh, what chemicals are used. It'll also determine about how much of what chemical to the other is used. It'll also be determined by the, the temperature of the, the room and the temperature of the surface that is having the insulation onto it. The relative humidity plays a part. Uh, the ventilation, you definitely want the space to be ventilated while it's curing. You don't want to trap all the toxic fumes inside the ha house or the building that you're insulating. Let it, let it air out. And then, like I said, follow the manufacturer recommendations about how long to let it cure before it's actually deemed to be uh, able to be occupied. Now also, that's a warning and uh, that they have as well. And we just talked about some cautions. And the third thing I want to talk about is, are the codes. Now the building codes are very aware of certain hazards for anything that, in fact, it's written for the health and safety and welfare of people using buildings, particularly on building codes. Obviously I'm talking about building codes <clears throat> and the international building code is prevalent throughout America. It's not in every community, but it is in most communities and those that are, it's not the international building code. I call it IBC. Sometimes it is that it's just altered to be its own code. For example, New York city has their own code, but you will look at it and you can compare it to the IBC, the international building code and the word for word in a lot of places are very, very similar. So, uh, the code writers are writing the code in order to keep people safe. And they're aware, aware of the hazards, particularly even on spray on insulation. There is a whole section about using plasticide insulation or spray on. I, that would be part of it. Uh, it's IBC 2603 and it's titled foam plastic in insulation. So if you're going to be using any kind of material and anything like this spray on insulation, but anything is written about in the, uh, in the building codes and particularly on IBC that I'm more familiar with because it's more prevalent in all of my projects and look at the code that is applicable for where you're doing your construction. There's other warnings to be aware of, not just code and not just the warnings from the manufacturer. But if you're, for example, is doing work in California, California has proposition 65 warnings. Look that up to make sure you're complying with what is written in there before using that material. Now the code also talks about how it has to be covered with a fire resistant material like gypsum board. And what that does is that if there is a fire, that protection layer of the gypsum board protects the occupant long enough from smoke and fire of development with that, uh, any materials, particularly the spray on insulation keeps them safe enough to be able to egress and get out of the danger zone of the building, get out of the building and head to safety. There's also things in the code about how you can use a spray on insulation on exterior walls, on the outside face or on the ceiling or on the roof or in the basement crawl space. And there's various things that are required and not required. For example, I was reading on the, if it's applied on the outside, you don't need that gypsum board to cover it like you do on the inside, because obviously they're trying to protect the person in the building from being trapped in there and being able to get out where they can get out safely, uh, while the, uh, the flame and the smoke due to, let's say the spray on insulation is contained, uh, and it's not going to be sending its gases out into where the occupants are. When a, the spray on insulation is used, the person that using it needs to wear goggles, full face mask, a respirator, clothes that cover all of their skin, gloves that can resist the chemicals as well. Uh, something covering their head and their hair if they're in, by the way, if you get in your hair, it's going to be very difficult to get out. It's a very adhesive type of material. 
so everything needs to be covered now we covered some of the benefits of using spray on insulation in another video and i'll leave a link about it right up here also there's a an article i wrote about insulation and uh, it categorizes all the different types that you might want to use including the bad insulation and rigid foam along with the open cell and closed cell uh, spray on insulation so you can see how beneficial it is to use spray on insulation because you can get a huge r value for just a small amount like an inch of spray on insulation closed cell you can get over six r value which is phenomenal particularly for a shipping container because shipping containers are a little restricted in size anyway and that then you're not taking up a lot of your wall space just to get the r value with insulation which you would have to if you're using let's say bad insulation to get the same r value you're trying to get with a spray on insulation with just one or two or three inches so here's some advantages of using spray on insulation besides just the r value related to the r value because it keeps the building so well insulated the uh, canadian urethane foam contractors association they claim that uh, the HVAC sizing you don't have to have as big of uh, uh, equipment they say it can be reduced as much as 35 percent without losing your comfort level in your space because of use of the spray on insulation also it reduces draft noise and increases the comfort so yeah when it's sprayed on to the surfaces like I mentioned before um, it goes tight uh, particularly the closed cell it goes tight onto the surface so it can reduce any kind of air leakage or any draft um, one thing that, though there is a side effect that's maybe not so good so be aware of this too if you were to just airtight your house with the spray on insulation where it's just no draft at all or anything that may not be so good you may deliberately need to put a vent into that space and here's why if you had some uh, exhaust vents in your toilet room or if you had an exhaust vent in your kitchen they're not going to run very efficiently if there isn't any makeup air going into the space that that's sucking out and pushing out of the house so because of the no makeup air if you don't have a very good ventilation in there um, those the motor of those fans are not going to work as efficiently and they're going they're just not going to uh, exhaust very very well so be aware of that give it some air uh, from some other source it, it's okay to have it really an airtight house with this uh, spray on insulation but make sure you get uh, some other ventilation some air coming in some makeup air uh, because it, it it blocks off all those little nicks and crannies that can prevent any insects or bugs or anything like that from infesting into your house if you had space in there you could actually have uh, trapped condensation and mold could actually grow so with the cl the closed cell spray on insulation as we mentioned just before um, that can be prevented so that's another good reason um, one thing too people say that using the spray on insulation and putting it out on all your surfaces to make it tight um, will also reduce your uh, this the sound noise um, it'll it'll dampen sound and that can be true but one thing you need to be aware of is that it adheres so strongly to the structure so it's going to move with the structure so you may hear some some movement of the building and it may be a little bit of a strange sensation to hear it because your your whole wall structure is moving with that not just the structure of the building so um, it's I don't think it's a negative thing necessarily but there will there, there's a possibility that acoustics will be affected a little bit because of that another thing is when the spray on insulation is applied to a structural member it oftentimes will stiffen that structural member and make it even stronger there's also some tax rebates and tax credits and green certifications such as lead certification and i'll leave a link down below about different sources you might want to look for that may apply to you when you're using the spray on 
insulation in your house. Now I said that I went to Home Depot to see what kind of uh, spray on insulation kind of kits that they have. And they had one and uh, which is not enough to do a house. It, um, I strongly discourage you from ever using a kit for various reasons. One is, is because the kit is already pre uh, measured. It's going to be mixed together when you're using it, but it's pre measured by the manufacturer. So um, the variable of the site you're using is not taking into account the temperature or the hum relative humidity. It doesn't really care because it's a kit. It's already measured out and it is what it is. Even though the box says it provides 200 board feet, a board feet is one square foot. 12 inches by 12 inches and one inch thick. That's one board feet. So these boxes provide enough spray for 200 board feet. And it costs about $389 for one box. Plus you will be the one has to, will have to do all the labor and, and to get it there. And quite honestly, you may not be all that well uh, trained to do it in comparison. The internet research I did says that you can get uh, 200 board feet for $200 applied by a professional. So why would you ever, why would you want to do it yourself? Maybe the only reason I can think of is that if you're just patching a little spot that may have gotten damaged, or if you live in the Himalayas and there isn't anyone else around that can do it, maybe there is. I've never been to Himalayas. I'm just kind of pulling that out of my hat. But there's, I can't think of very many good reasons to actually do it yourself. It's cheaper, probably at least the same cost, even if it's more expensive. The people that are actually applying it that you hire as professionals, They've gone through weeks of training, hopefully years, and they know how to mix the, the chemicals just right for that day, for that use, for that temperature, relative humidity, everything. They know how to apply it. They're not going to overspray it. They shouldn't anyway, if they're experienced, so that they'll, they'll know how long it takes to set before it needs to be encapsulated by a gypsum board wall or whatever your design is. There's so many variables. Don't don't do it yourself if you can help it. There's no, there's really not too many good reasons I can think of for you to do it yourself. Have I said that enough? So there you have it. Spray on insulation is a dangerous material to use if it is not used properly. If it's not used using the manufacturer's recommendations, if you don't allow it to cure properly, if it's not applied properly, if it's not mixed properly, if you're not using enough protection around yourself on the clothes and goggles, gloves, and so forth, there's all kinds of precautions you must take. And if you do that, the code writers say it's safe. Thanks a lot for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Share more of your comments. I want to hear more from you. I love hearing from the Can Clan. We'll talk to you later on the next episode.